In spite of everything we've learned about smoking since the Surgeon General's report of 1964 was published, it's still the number one preventable cause of death and disease in our society. And I think people tend to be harder on themselves than they should when they want to stop smoking. I don't use the word uh, quit, for instance. I think nobody's a quitter. And I think the first thing we need to do is to calm down a little bit. Physicians need to do a little less finger wagging. And we need to be on the same page as the patient. The best tips I've ever learned come from patients themselves. We do know that the number one way to stop smoking is to stop cold turkey. That means you can give them up. Withdrawal from nicotine might take a couple of days. It might take even longer. But the cost, both financially and health-wise, is enormous. I think the way we ask people about smoking is a it kind of a turnoff sometimes. And we're the ones that bring it up. Patients are usually reluctant to bring this up because they, they know that we're only going to give them a drug or we're only going to tell them don't do it. The questions that I ask are, hey, well, what brand do you buy? Uh, what brand do I? They've never been asked that. You always smoke Marlboro. And then you quickly say Marlboro what? Marlboro Lights, Marlboro Regulars, Marlboro 72s, Marlboro 100s, Marlboro Ultralights, Marlboro Leaded, Marlboro Unleaded. I mean, the whole point is to change the vocabulary. People have never been asked what brand they buy. Also, why do you buy a filter? Well, they've never been asked that either. And why would you even ask that? Well, 99% of cigarettes have filters on them, but they don't know how the filter got there. And if you ask somebody, well, why do you buy a filter? They sort of say, well, it, it's safe, but they can't get the word safer out because they know that's silly. The filter does not make it any safer. It only makes your mind think it's safer. And what you're doing, actually doing when you inhale through a filter is increasing the risk of heart disease and emphysema because you have to suck through that water of really like cotton, which is called cellulose acetate, just to get the nicotine that you crave. I think the key thing, again, is to ask some simple questions. Instead of saying, do you smoke? How much do you smoke? Well, what brand do you buy? How much do you buy? I asked a pregnant woman one time, uh, I just want to ask one question. How much do you buy? She said, I don't want to talk about it. I had a bad childhood. I don't know what that meant. But I said, no, no, just how much do you spend on? OK, I, I pack a day, OK? I said, well, and I calculated that at nearly $5 a pack these days. And it's well over $2,000. And she slapped her face. She said, my God, that means my husband's buying $4,000. $6,000 for a family on welfare. The people with the least disposable income are spending the most on cigarettes. So what brand do you buy? How much do you buy? And when's the first one you light up in the morning? If they get out of bed and light one up, we can postpone each one. Postpone it till after breakfast, not with that coffee. Take the cigarettes out of the vehicle, make it a little more inconvenient, and put them right out. It's not just the number of cigarettes, it's the number of hits, the inhalations of carbon monoxide, cyanide, ammonia that people get. And all those 7,000 chemicals that are coming into their body like ammonia and formaldehyde. I think it's very important that we can debunk, demystify, demythologize a lot of the things that people think about cigarettes.